this webinar is going to be with our top weight loss coaches. My name is Felicia Brocolo. I am the director of marketing at the Life Coach School and I'm also a certified weight loss coach. I got super into this work because of my own weight loss, because I felt like I was struggling, didn't feel like I had any control around food, didn't love my body, and that was kind of what brought me in to this whole world. Since then, I got to the lowest weight that I've ever been. I love my body more than I ever have in my life and it really just snowballed from there. Everything else in my life changed as a result of me learning about weight loss. I'm Katrina Ubell. I am a master certified life and weight loss coach. I'm also a pediatrician. I'm an MD physician and I actually left my practice as a doctor to work full time as a life and weight loss coach. So now I focus on helping other women physicians in clinical practice to lose weight and keep it off permanently. I'm Corinne Crabtree. I am a certified master weight loss and life coach also. Now I really focus on common sense weight loss, the mind management part. If you can't get out of your own way with your mind, you're not gonna be able to get out of your own way with your food. My name is Martha I am, and I am also a master certified life and weight loss coach. So my story is that I was a binge eater for more than 30 years. So I went back to university, my graduate degree was in philosophy, and I thought I'm going to go back and I'm going to use my brain and I'm going to contribute to the research. And I decided I'm going to become a clinical psychologist. And I had everything all lined up and then I found a life coach. She really helped me. And that's when my journey to um, become a coach began. And since then, it's just been such a thrill to use Brooke's tools in my life and to help my clients stop binging. So we're gonna talk about how to lose weight without feeling restricted or deprived. In my mind, I had connected losing weight with feeling a ton of restriction, not being able to eat what I wanted, and feeling really deprived. In my mind, that was just gonna be temporary, like a means to an end. Like I can just, just muscle my way through this restriction and deprivation to lose however many pounds I wanted to lose, and then I'll be able to kind of loosen it up a little bit, eat a little bit more normally, as I always thought, and then it, I won't feel so restricted and deprived. It's important for us to spend a little time just thinking about what are our beliefs about weight loss? What do we think it involves? Common thoughts are in order to lose weight, I have to restrict and deprive myself. And we might say, no, but it's really the truth because in the past, that's how it's been for me. But it's still a belief. It's a thought that we have. Here's the crux. Restriction and deprivation are feelings and feelings are always created by your thoughts. So that means that it can't be a fact that food makes you feel anyway, or what other people eat makes you feel anyway, because food is just neutral. It just sits there. And same with what other people eat. Our thoughts about it are what create our experience of feeling restricted. The way we think is not set in stone. The way we think really is something that we always have a choice in the matter. And so sometimes we're like, but it feels really true. But if it's a thought that even if it feels true, if it creates a feeling that you don't like or you don't want to experience, you always have the option of changing that. We want to pick thoughts that feel true and believable to us that give us the result that we want which is a better feeling thought, not feeling restricted or deprived. An example of new thoughts might be, all that food is just sitting there, it's just food. I can have this food anytime I want to as long as I plan for it in advance. It's okay for me to want something and not have it. No diet plan can make you feel anything. It's the way that you think about it. At first it might be a little like, well shoot, it's all my thoughts, but this is the most empowering best news that I could ever offer to you. You truly get to create your experience of eating food that serves your body. We know it ser serves your body when it allows your body to shed the extra weight that it no longer needs. And it keeps you at that ideal weight for your size and makes you feel good and energetic and um, really serves your body. So I'll tell you a little bit about the way that I used to plan before I knew these tools, before I really understood what worked and what didn't work. I was planning the hardest thing that I could possibly think of because I thought there was no way I could lose weight. So I would try to fast for 20 hours and then I would plan on having a keto snack and a keto dinner because I just thought that I had to do the most extreme thing that there was in order to lose weight. And then of course, almost every single day, I couldn't follow my plan. And then I felt out of control because I would just wanna eat all of the things. And I was like, why do I keep not being able to follow my plan and I can't trust myself and I can't lose weight? The way that I was planning was not working for me at all. So the top three things that you guys should know 
about the importance of planning and how to get results that last. The first thing that really helped me was knowing that there is nothing wrong with me. I thought that I was broken. I thought that I just had no self-control. Our brains as human beings are wired to always want more food for survival. So if you feel like you are thinking about food all of the time, I want you to know that that doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with you or you're not broken because of it. Knowing that for me just kind of took all that pressure away of, you know, comparing myself to other people and just thinking that I was broken. The second thing that I think is super important is that we use our best brain to plan and we are always writing it down. So what that means using your best brain is using your prefrontal cortex. This is the part of our brain that separates us from animals. It helps us think ahead. It helps us live our best life. This is how we plan for long-term goals instead of just wanting that immediate gratification. And it's also super important to write that down. What typically happens if we're not doing that, we kind of have that in our mind and we're like, okay, I'm gonna eat healthy tomorrow. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna, you know, eat keto or whatever it is. And then the moment comes and somebody invites us out for lunch and we're like, mm, a grilled ham and cheese sandwich and some fries sounds way better. I don't wanna be the only one not doing it. And we have all of these thoughts that come in and change our mind very easily. We just want that immediate gratification, just whatever sounds good in the moment. That's why when we use our prefrontal cortex, we're creating that plan ahead of time, doing something that we know is going to create the best for us later. And then writing it down is so important too, because again, it takes away all of that arguing with ourselves. When we write it down, it's into reality. It's not something that we can argue with ourselves back and forth about. And then the third thing is to make sure that plan that we're creating is very realistic. In my story in the beginning, I was not creating a realistic plan and I was not setting myself up for success. It was just leading me to a lot of failures and a lot of not being able to trust myself. So when we plan realistically, it helps us build trust with ourselves so that we know, okay, I'm going to do the things that I say I'm going to do. In the past, I would make the hard plan, not follow it, and then think I can't trust myself, I'm out of control. And that just kept happening over and over and over again until I really believed that that was just the kind of person that I was. And it felt so true because I believed it and then it would happen. So when we plan realistically, this is how we can create those long-term results. We can start slowly, make a plan that we know that we can follow, that we can build that trust with ourselves, and say, hey, I say I'm gonna do this thing and now I'm gonna go out and do it. That really takes you from you know, that mindset of being out of control, I can't trust myself, into learning how to trust yourself and always do what you say you're going to do. It's all those little moments when we're not planning, when it's just in the moment, the like, screw it, whatever, it doesn't really matter. All of those things add up to something so much bigger. And when we plan ahead of time with that best part of our brain, it really helps us get the exact results that we want in a way that is truly going to last. But I will tell you, here's the crap that's gonna come up when you're like sitting there going, all right, I'm gonna put all that food that I normally eat on here, but I don't understand how you even lose weight doing that. Here is exactly how. Before you eat, we're gonna use common sense. You're gonna eat only when you're hungry. Like we have a stomach and we have a brain and they are hardwired to talk to each other all the time. But what happens in the diet industry is they teach us to override it and do a lot of other things instead of listening and getting to know our stomach and our brain. It's very simple. There's one step. Every single time you see yourself trying to eat, want to eat, thinking about eating, looking at some food, noticing some food, smelling some food, looking at your plan, you only have to ask yourself, am I hungry in this moment? And if you're not hungry, you don't eat. And if you are hungry, you go and you give yourself permission. I made sure that when I made a plan for the day, it had every single thing on there so that I was not setting myself up to have thoughts like, ooh, I can't have that, ooh, whatever. I just knew that if I had a really good doable plan every day, a realistic plan, and if I only ate when I was hungry, that probably was gonna get a lot of weight off. A lot of people will say, I think I'm hungry. You're not hungry if you think you're hungry. Wait for a physical cue. I tell people all the time, the moment you think you're hungry, the moment you start like wondering about food, go get 16 ounces of water, kill the water, set a timer for 15 minutes, then come back and see. 
and notice in 15 minutes you're still hungry and if you're still thinking you're hungry then allow yourself to eat everybody always thinks that we're supposed to wait till stomach growls not everybody gets a growling stomach the other thing that i want to say about um, waiting until you're hungry is a lot of people have craptastic thoughts about getting hungry so if your first thought is like oh my god i knew it in order to lose weight i'm gonna have to be dying and gnawing my arm off and all this other stuff that's not true what you need to wait for is like the first signs of hunger and i always tell people like look at where you're at let's just kill the low-hanging fruit first number one don't eat by the clock anymore eat when you're actually hungry that cleans up so much bs eating it's unreal the other thing is don't wait until you're gnawing your arm off just start getting used to the idea of feeling some safety around food. It's like, you know what? I think I can wait till I'm hungry. I'm not gonna die or get pregnant. I'm just gonna sit here and wait and the slightest signs, I will go ahead and eat. It starts giving you some of that normalized relationship with food, some of that permission that you need and you start practicing some of those skills that we all need around food. Like don't overthink it. Like I think we're so used to overthinking food that it feels weird to not be obsessing about it, to not be thinking about it all the time and stuff. And the moment that you're like, all right, I'm just going to write out all the food I'm going to eat. And you know what? I'm not going to think a bunch of crap like Katrina taught me not to think. And you know what? I'll just eat when I get hungry. It just makes everything simpler. And sometimes we freak out even over that. That I think is why you need your 20 minute calls that they give you in scholars, because it's the freak out to like, what do you mean this could be easier than I thought? That's where you need a coach to help you. That's where you need somebody to help you work through some of that thinking. I'm a big believer in the simpler you keep your weight loss, the simpler your life's gonna be. You get to go out and do bigger, better things with your life when you're not, when you basically give up the problem of your weight. This is the most underused weight loss strategy on the planet. And I bet that some of you just rolled your eyes. I'm pretty sure I heard a groan or two, and I'm just saying that's a little bit rude, <laughs> okay? I get that love sounds so hokey, and I think this is one of the reasons why it never gets its due in the weight loss journey. So what do most people use instead? Usually shame, pressure, and judgment. At least that's what I used. On my nearly 35 year journey to stop binge eating and lose almost 100 pounds, I tried to shame, pressure and judge my way down that scale and out of my binging. But those strategies didn't work for me, at least not for very long. And that unrelenting self-monitoring that I did, it put so much pressure on me, it consumed my whole life. And before I, I discovered Brooke's work, I truly thought this was the only way down the scale. If it didn't work, then I thought I had to redouble the pressure. I just wasn't putting enough pressure on myself. Here's the thing. I got down to my goal weight several times using those strategies, okay? But when I got down there, guess what I still did? I still shamed myself because it took too damn long. I pressured myself never to gain a fraction of an ounce back again. I constantly judged myself for the remaining things that weren't perfect. So I fought all the way down the scale and then I got to my goal weight and I was still fighting at my goal weight. Why? Because you get better at what you practice. If you are going to shame yourself down the scale, shame will meet you at the bottom. If you're going to pressure yourself down that scale, guess what's going to be waiting for you? If you're going to judge yourself down the scale, judge is going to be your friend at the bottom and not a really great friend. So it's just not sustainable. Think of all the mental, physical, emotional energy those strategies take away. They suck so much of your life away. And then you don't have the bandwidth to do all of these, these things these brilliant women have just shared with you. Planning the food that fuels you. Checking in to see if you're really hungry. Managing your mind when you're presented between the choice between like a carrot salad or a carrot cake. You don't have the bandwidth to do that when you're using these strategies. Shame says things like, you are so hopeless. You had that piece of pizza last night. We may as well eat the pizza all day long today. Love, not sounding so hokey, is it now? Love says, honey, you were trying your best to get through your day. Yeah, I know the plan was to have a stir fry, but beating yourself up won't help. Let's figure out what we need every night after those crazy kids finally fall asleep. This is about taking care of us now, not about hating us for not being at our goal weight yet. And every coach inside Scholars has probably tried everything you've tried. 
we know this journey and every coach has had to make love a part of their weight loss journey for it to be permanent. When you join, if you join, and we're hoping you join Self Coaching Scholars, you're going to learn all of this, right? How to plan your food, how to follow a protocol without feeling restricted or deprived, how to check in whether you're hungry or not, and how to love yourself every step of the way and so much more. And we're going to be in there with you, helping you do it all. Honestly, we have totally got you inside Self Coaching Scholars. So this is just kind of a little sneak peek of what you're going to get in Self Coaching Scholars when you join. We have a ton of weight loss material. You're going to get weekly coaching, 24 seven access to ask a coach and just a ton of support on your weight loss journey. So what we share today is just a little sneak peek of what you're going to get when you join Self Coaching Scholars.